What's up everyone, welcome back to my channel where we talk about all things volleyball. As you guys can see, I have a very special guest here today. My friend, my teammate, David Smith. Dave, thanks for being here. Uh, I'm happy to be here. How's it doing, everybody? So, just to let you all know, Dave literally lives right upstairs, so it's not like he had to make a huge trek to come here, but I have been wanting him to be on the channel again for a while, so I'm very happy you are here. I'm glad you finally invited me down there into your house. I have invited you not that many times, but <laughs> he's here, I'm excited. Anyway guys, quick update from here in Poland. We still haven't had any matches, but our schedule, starting on Monday, is about to get great. <laughs> Crazy. So on Monday, we are going to Sylvania. Maribor for Champions League. And then we go to Russia to play Lokomotiv Novosibirsk in Siberia, Russia. And then we go to We come home for one day. And we, and we go, go to, to Italy. Yes, yes. So we go to Italy to play Lube Civitanova. And then back to Poland for a Plusiga match in Slovakia. Complete opposite the other side of the country. Which is the furthest trip that we have here in Zaksa in the Plusliga in Poland. So four matches, four away matches, four different countries. That is insane. So wish us luck guys. It's going to be a doozy, but it's we're hoping <laughs> to win all of them. So wish us luck. Alright guys, so for today's video, we're not going to be watching any volleyball video, but I did put out on Instagram a little Q&A sort of thing for David, for me, about David, about Zoxa, about Team USA, and I got a bunch of questions. David, are you ready? I am ready, let's go. But before we get into the questions, we're gonna play a little game because I didn't play this with David the last video we did. A little game of this or that. Let's go. All right, Dave, so I, on my phone, have two or three options. I'm gonna list these out and you're gonna say which one you would like better, pretty much. Okay. All right, first thing. I ask everyone, coffee or tea? Coffee. How many coffees do you have a day? One or two. One or two, really? One or two, yeah, one in the morning. Like if we have double day, I'll have one before morning practice and one before afternoon practice. But he also is like very kind of fancy with his coffee. He measures it out. Newfound passion you found in Italy, I believe. Um, Probably, yeah, tail end of my uh, time in France and tour, I started having a little bit, but mostly um, 2016 when I came to Poland. Got it, yeah, this last summer in, in Italy for VNL, David had his station out, he was measuring, he had scales out, he was pouring for different people. That's right. It was amazing. So thank you for we that. We had a lot of time. We had a lot yeah, of time. They, 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 they said to find a border buster. And so I was like, okay, I'm gonna learn how to make good French press coffee. So I just kind of took it and ran with it, learned a lot, and found out what I like. And my wife still doesn't drink coffee. So but everything that I make, I have to drink myself. He is gonna make me one tomorrow morning. Oh, I yeah. am? Okay. He just found that out just now. Yeah. Anyway, thank you. <laughs> All right, so David's been to three Olympics, London, Rio, or Tokyo, incredible. London, Rio, or Tokyo? Rio. Rio, because we want a medal. Yeah. For sure. Absolutely. All right, so David played five years in France. Correct. And this is his seventh year? Sixth year Sixth in year in Poland. Yes. Great yep. places to live. I know they've enjoyed both countries. But Poland or France, you don't have to answer. Living or volleyball? I think um, it's a very different question. Yeah, that's true. Because I'll just answer what I, uh, off the top of my head. I think yeah. living in France was awesome. One reason was because I was in the same place for five years. Kay. So I played yeah. all five years in tour. Yes. In the middle of France, Loire Valley, absolutely beautiful. The club took great care of us. Um, Cohen was born between my first and second year there. Um, um, I, I was with the club, His son. with pretty much the same coach the whole time, uh, same opposite. So I just, we just developed some really good relationships there and uh, we just loved the French culture. But the reason that we left France was because I was looking for a better level of volleyball yeah. and I found that in Poland for sure. So nice. it was a tough decision to leave personally and for the family because we had so many connections there. But like, obviously I've been here for six years now and I have no regrets volleyball wise for leaving. And obviously we've created our own little niche here too. Yeah. But, so. so different, different pros yeah. and cons, yeah. different pros and cons. And actually there's some questions in the question and answer part that we'll get into. Whenever you go on vacation, which we don't have <laughs> vacation <laughs> guys, or holidays, what is beach or snowy mountain nature outside, beach, that kind of thing. Beach, 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 beach. I love the warm way more than I like the cold. Yeah. So, and I think part of it too is being overseas for six, seven months of the year. <laughs> I mean, I grew up in Southern California, so yeah. it was never freezing weather. So yeah, for sure at the beach, probably specifically Hawaii, to be honest, my wife and I have gone several times. Good answer. We love Hawaii, yeah. Trained we love Hawaii. well. <laughs> 
He better say that. Okay, nice. Okay, if you could change positions, would you rather be a setter or a libero? Oh, setter. Better. I oh. thought you were gonna say setter outside. That was gonna be a little more Okay, difficult. okay. Just just brushes setter. off libero. Setter or outside? I think the outside just have so much more fun. Like you get more involved. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, well, I guess setters the setters are pretty involved in every play, but setters you harder. Don't have to get the setters harder. Just for anyone out there, setters harder. I think. In different ways. In different ways. I think ways. physically outside is more difficult. Yes. But the amount, like especially like when we're talking about like Micah, Kavika, and all the other national teams that Elvis here and all our other setters that I've had in the past, like the great ones just really understand the game. They know how to manage the players. They know how to manage the game. They know how to manage the refs, the coaches. Like they have so much going on <laughs> in between their ears that. that is like when you get a great setter, like it makes a big difference. I so. agree. So what's your answer? Outside hitter. Well, the original answer was, was setter. setter. Yeah, bro. Off second libero. answer was outside hitter. Done with this interview. <laughs> no. All right. So, well, I guess this applies to being a middle. Straight down kill or straight down block? Block. Block. Thing. Yeah, yeah, block. Straight down block. Straight down block. Straight down block. It's just harder to get. Yeah. Okay. This question was submitted by your wife, Kelly, who is awesome. Okay. These are foods that David doesn't like. Okay. Pot roast or eggplant? I don't know how he doesn't like pot roast. It's just like meat with gravy in a pot and it's just like delicious. Who's one? I'll take the eggplant. Okay, I take the pot roast. Candy or ice cream? What kind of candy? Um, M&M's or vanilla ice cream? Vanilla ice cream. Thanks for answering these questions, Hello. Dave. Now we just know a little bit more about you David. Know me. All right, now we know a little bit more about David, but we're gonna get into the questions. I got a ton on Instagram about David, about me, about Zaxa, about Team USA, about life. They're not in any real order. Let's just get into it. First question, David. What are the differences playing for the USA and playing for club in Poland? There's a lot of differences. <laughs> a lot of differences. Obviously, the primary one being language. Language. All right, Ty Neil 0 asked, what is the one thing, or what is one thing that we have learned from each other from playing together? I'll go first. I learned a lot of work ethic and discipline from David. It's true though, you guys. Seeing how he works, especially as a older, semi-older player, his ability to work and stay disciplined in the weight room, on the court, in rehab, in warm-up is insane. So watching him do that has inspired me to take my work ethic to the next level because I'm not someone that always took those things seriously. I appreciate that. I'm glad to hear that too. Uh, for me, it, it's the mental side of the game with you. I think you're the guy who puts in a lot of time with video, rely a lot on my just physical athletic ability to kind of read and react. But, you know, seeing you, especially with like charting servers and understanding where you're supposed to be, that just the anticipation that you have because you know what's gonna happen before it's happened because you've seen it already. Could you put in the time to watch video? That's something that I, I definitely learned for myself too because and the better I can understand the, the game or the better I can understand my opponent, the more useful I'm gonna be on my team. So you do, you definitely put in the, the work on the video side of things. Aww. Yay! Yay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Kiel underscore one zero zero six. Try, I don't, these names you guys. Ask, how long have we known each other and what were our first impressions of one another? I think we first met in 2011, in the summers, Summer for with sure. a national team. Yeah. And my first impression of David was, um, he like will hit perfect sharp straight down hits, but then if he gets mad, he starts hitting deep. And that's, <laughs> that's like when you get hit in the face. So I remember being so scared in defense against him. I think that was my first impression. What was your first impression? Because I mean, when you enter the gym, you don't get to know people like that quickly it's and true. you just play against each other sometimes. So I just remember yeah. being like, where do I stand on defense? Yeah, you definitely <laughs> like for most of the guys, on the national team, first impression is always volleyball, it's not perfect. Yeah, exactly. I mean, maybe a couple guys, maybe like they maybe shake your hand the first step, step <laughs> yeah. in the gym. But most of the time, you're like a young guy and you're trying to sneak in, exactly. crawl along the wall, and just, just like, like hide in the back of the huddle when the coach is talking. <laughs> My first impression of you was a lot of enthusiasm. <laughs> a lot of enthusiasm. Um, and I things think there was never a change. Lot more, like, especially back 2000, 2010, 2011, there was a lot more anger, but just like not as much joy on the court. And then all of a sudden we have a guy that's bringing in a lot of jumps and screams and 
It was it was fun. It was a little startling at first, but I'm just my voice was startling to just hear the scream on the court. Yeah. But oh, well, that's nice. I mean, I feel like my first impression of you is true, and your first impression of me is true. Of course, because I still like to scream, and you still like to hit deep balls when you get mad and try to hit us in the face. Yeah, I do. All right, our next question actually comes from the same person. And to preface this question, Dave does have hearing loss. We talked about that in our last video. It's incredible. Kinds of things that he does. But this person asked, does David, have you ever felt insecure about your hearing loss It playing professional volleyball or volleyball in general? I don't want to say like, I need a little bit more than normal sometimes. And I try to do my best to read lips and you know look people in the faces so you don't have to repeat yourself or we can just have normal conversations. Yeah. But there are times when I'm not seeing the person who's trying to get my attention and uh, I won't hear them and it's not because I'm being a jerk and not listening or paying attention or <laughs> try, like, I'm just ignoring you or something like that because I literally don't hear you. I kind of had to go through my whole life just understanding how to explain that to other people. It's not just the volume's turned down, it's the volume turned down and the garbage clarity too sometimes. <laughs> so it's like, I can hear sound, I can see that you're speaking to me and it just doesn't make sense sometimes. Yeah, I love that you said it's part of your story, it's part of your journey. Everyone has a different story and that's yeah. a big part of yours and yeah. what a story it is. I mean, that's, you guys, I've talked about this. It's insane and incredible the kinds of things he does. I mean, you have 70, 75% hearing loss and you're playing at the top level. International Volleyball, Olympics, three times. Okay, enough said. <laughs> enough said about you. On that topic, uh -huh. Popoy Bato, okay. I don't know, asks, what kind of, what's your brand of hearing aids? I am wearing Oticon hearing aids right now. Uh -huh. They've been really great to me. They've kind of partnered with me the last three Olympics and kind of given me new aids every quad every whenever they burn out really so they've been awesome great device the technology even from the first pair i had in 2012 to now it's just astounding the kind wow. of technology obviously all different kind of hearing aid brands have it but oticon's been great to me and then these devices are awesome switching subjects a little bit Krzysztof underscore buszek very polish name there asked did david encourage eric to come to Zaxa. I did, I did. I was one of the, when the club started understanding that they were gonna need a little better, you know, after Zadi decided that he was gonna switch club, um, they, they reached out to me and asked if, if Eric was interested, and I'm like, I don't know, he's in Russia. <laughs> so they asked me to reach out to Eric, and I did, and I kind of floated some feelers by. He told me he was not, at, the, at that time, you weren't exactly sure what your plans were for the following year, but I was just like, hey, like, obviously I wanted you to come. I love playing with you on the national team. You're obviously one of the top liberos in the world. So if we could bring you in, I think you would, obviously I thought you were a huge asset to the team. I remember one of the first questions they were like, we know he's good. We know he's a good volleyball player, obviously two time Olympian. Well, I, what is what question is coming? I don't know what question they're asking. They wanted me to know. They wanted to know if you were a good person. And oh, I just, really? I just laughed in their face. I'm like, he's a great guy. Like that. It's not a thing to worry about there. Well, I appreciate that, but that is an interesting question to ask. I've actually never heard that it's, overseas. It's one of the reasons I appreciate this club because I think they're very mindful of like not just the talent level they're putting on the court, but how it all works together. Yeah. Um, and that's one of the reasons I was like, absolutely, like if you can somehow convince them to come here. Like I would endorse that. I don't want him to come here. So thank you. It and worked. Daniel <laughs> underscore Dykstra asked, "What is our favorite memory about Team USA outside of the Olympics?" Cool. I think for me, I don't know if you were on this trip. I think you were. When we took a river cruise on the Amazon. Yeah. I don't know if I would call it a cruise. We took a river boat trip <laughs> up the Amazon and it was so just out of the realm of anything that we had ever done before. Yeah. We saw river dolphins, we saw river communities, we ate river food. And it was just like, you didn't, cause he doesn't eat fish. fish. Can't eat fish. But it was just like so different. And- Like the river community that you were talking about. Yeah. It's like literally like cities in the middle of the act. The Amazon is massive. Yeah, and there's like never. literally floating community in the middle of the yeah. Amazon and it's insane. For me that, it just kind of blew my mind. I was just like, I'm on the Amazon river, eating Amazon food, looking at river dolphins yeah. and enjoying life. So for me that was like and that just was a one unique And part of story. the river where the two parts of the river come together yes. but they don't mix right away. So you literally have like, you drive along yeah. part of the Amazon and like this part is like, I think it was like a couple degrees cooler yeah. than the other. Like you literally put both hands in the water and it's like this is colder it than that one. Crazy. And it goes like that for a little a while before yeah. it finally mixed it. I, was, I, I thought was that insane. was really cool. Yeah. So yeah, we've had some really unique, cool experiences outside of volleyball, but volleyball takes us to these places, but yeah. then we kind of have to figure it out on our own after that. Jess Omoro Dion asked, back to your hearing, has your hearing aid ever broken in a game and how did you handle it? Yes, on many different <laughs> levels. 
because my hearing aids are actually two different parts. There's an ear mold, which is like a softer plastic and actually goes in the ear. And then like right here, I don't know if you can see it, right here is connected to a harder plastic. Yeah, it's in the and back. this is the actual unit. So this is like, okay. this is like the microphone and the speaker. And then this is just kind of like directing it to my ear. So this actually holds it in play, helps. And there was one mat where it literally, like it separated right here, which is like, there's two different parts so they separate. So it's not like an irreparable oh, okay. throat break, but it literally like came out. So I, I still had the ear mold in my ear, but the hard plastic was like flying I across I remember the floor. That. Where was in that? Oklahoma. We were playing against That was a long time ago. <laughs> yeah. wow, what was that, 2013. 2013. All right, it's just Yoshizaki. That's a Japanese name. I should know that. Ask, do you know ASL or American Sign Language? I do. I do. Uh, two different ways I know it. Before I was born, my mom was actually a teacher for deaf students. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, so she was a teacher for deaf students. Obviously, my mom was like, oh, that's the way that we can teach myself and my siblings how to communicate when my hearing aids, when like in the morning when my hearing aids are yeah. in, or if we're in the pool and I'm not wearing my hearing aids, or if my hearing aids ever go out, or if there's a noisy situation, blah, blah, blah. Okay, KNS2202 asks, what is it like learning a new team dynamic when you switch clubs and in other languages? Kind of be patient and observe and just keep your eyes open for a little bit, kind of understand. I agree. So, I mean, what is it like? It can be difficult, it can be hard, but if you, like we said, stay patient, open mind, observe, it makes it a lot easier. Yeah. All right, T Run asks, who would be better? Eric playing middle blocker. I don't like where this question is going. <laughs> or David playing libero. It's him, you guys. Dave, what the hell for a middle. I mean, even not even for a middle, just in general, has really good ball control, can pass, always takes a short serve, can play a good defense. And blocking, no. So David's gonna win that one. Todorok won Shoto. <laughs> asks, at what age did we start playing volleyball? I was a freshman in high school. Uh, I didn't start playing club until I was 17, but I started my high school team. Oh, uh, was that 14 years 14 old? Or 14 15. Yeah, 14, 15. You guys, sorry to interrupt you. I get questions all the time. Is it too late to start volleyball at Never. 14, 15, 16? Never. Started at 14, didn't play club till 17, right. then won a national championship, three time Olympian. You guys can do it. Don't follow me. I started when I was eight. It was a very different environment. I was raised by coaches. I was basically birthed in a gym. But um, yeah, you guys, if you want to start, just start. Yeah. Just go for it. Why not? I mean, you're not going to know until you try. Exactly. And I, I mean, that's literally the only reason I did it, because I just wanted to try it. You know, like at that time, I was I was soccer, soccer player. Yeah. Okay, Kyle.wise.83 asks, who did you look up to slash inspire you to play when you were a beginner or a younger volleyball player? When I finally understood like volleyball and I was looking for other volleyball players, I think the primary guy I looked up to was actually Ryan Millar. For me, growing up in Hawaii, I loved players that had had ties to Hawaii, were either like born there, raised there. Luckily, I was raised in an environment that was surrounded by amazing volleyball players. So yeah. I looked up to a lot of the Hawaii players. Lindsey Burke, who's a three-time Olympian. Robin Amo, three-time Olympian. Logan Tom was actually born in Hawaii. All right, Jesse Knuckles asks, what do you have in mind for your life after volleyball? Oh, but I'd like to stay involved in volleyball somehow too. So I don't know if I want to coach. Yeah, I could go one of those two ways. Either stay involved in volleyball on the coaching side or try to find a way back into the engineering world that I left behind. Anyone watching this that could give us jobs I think for me, I want to stay involved in volleyball. I think we all know that I have this huge passion for volleyball and growing the sport and helping younger players. So I think like coaching, clinics, um, consulting, mentoring for me is what's going to happen. And I'm excited. I'm excited to give back. And I don't know. We'll see. All right, Elise On asks, what's one thing practical, personal, or professional you wish you knew before starting an international volleyball career? I think the biggest thing for me was don't expect that, that university setting to transplant over to Europe. It's oh. a very different experience kind of situation. Yeah, just it's different. Just, it's very different. And so if you expect, you know, everything that you had in university to kind of be the same thing here in a professional environment or expect it to even be better, that's not always the case. I think for me, the one thing that I wish I could tell myself going back was that don't be afraid to 
reach out or to put yourself out there to your teammates or your club. There are gonna be moments where you struggle or you don't know how to do something. For me, I didn't know how to drive a stick. I didn't even know what, <laughs> what correct gas to put in the car. And I was scared to ask because I thought I was weak. I thought I was embarrassing, but it's not. It's not embarrassing to reach out for help. Everyone needs help at a certain point. And the faster you can get over that, you can start getting to know your teammates better, your club better, and overall it'll just make your experience. China. Uh, asked, what's y'all, She, this, this person wrote y'all, favorite thing about being teammates with each other? Nothing. No, I'm just <gasps> kidding, I'm just kidding. Okay, I love that Dave has this energy in training. On days where people might be tired, I might be tired, I might not be feeling it, it might be cold outside, I don't wanna be there, and yes, there are days like that. And Dave always just manages to bring this goofy personality, energy, that like makes me laugh, makes me wanna work hard, and sometimes I'm like, please don't do that today, but it always manages to make me happy, it makes me smile and work harder, and I really appreciate it. Glad be the crazy guy. He is even at like age 36. You are the crazy the energy. The only reason I'm around this long. If I was acting like my age, I would be like crawling into the gym every day. That's true. Okay, talk about me. Oh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I enjoy that. Like, oh, I don't enjoy. I like that we've been teammates so long, so I can trust. Like, I, I think we've built up. A, a lot of trust over the years being teammates. And so I know I can not lay into you, but I know I can say hard things to you and, it, and you're not gonna take it personally. Like it might not feel good when I say it, but um, I know that I can verbalize those expectations to you. Yeah. Uh, because like I said, we've known each other for so long. So we have a personal relationship that we've built up of trust, but like I've also seen you perform at a high level for so long. Thank that you. I, I trust you to be able to do that. Thanks. All right, last question comes from Catalina Acolon. Will we both be working towards Paris 2024? Yes. Affirmative. Yes, we'll be trying. We'll be hopefully going. We're gonna work towards it. We're not done. We're not done. Paris 24, 2024 is in yeah. our sights. All right, you guys, that is all the questions we have for tonight. David, thank you for being here. Thank great you for, question. Yeah, thank great you, question, guys. Thank you for asking those. Yeah. I appreciate you answering, coming on my channel with me. We have a crazy schedule coming up, like we said. So wish us good luck. We'll be traveling all over the world. Hopefully we win. And I will talk to you all soon. Peace.